Question number 21. Correct the following statement. Should it be needed? The total cost of ownership calculator can help Azure users estimate their current charges accumulated when using Azure for a given month. Option A. Pricing calculator. Option B. Cost alerts. Option C. Cost analysis. Option D. The current term is correct. The correct answer is, option C, cost analysis. Cost analysis provides near real-time estimates of current costs and forecasted costs based on a user's accumulated Azure usage. The next question is, what is meant by multi-tenancy in describing a public cloud deployment model? Option A, many organizations share the same set of resources within a cloud infrastructure across one or more geo-distributed locations. Option B, a single organization has exclusive access to resources within a cloud infrastructure across one or more geo-distributed locations. Option C, a single organization shares the same set of resources within a cloud infrastructure across one or more geo-distributed locations. Option D, many organizations are restricted to a specific set of cloud infrastructure resources in a bound geographic region. The correct answer is, option A. Many organizations share the same set of resources within a cloud infrastructure across one or more geo-distributed locations. Multi-tenancy is when many organizations share the same set of resources within a cloud infrastructure across one or more geo-distributed locations. The next question is, a company requires 24-7 support for their custom applications running on Microsoft Azure. Besides, they may want to speak to an architect by phone or Microsoft Teams to review their new platform as a service deployment. Which service plan must the company purchase to retain these services? Option A, Basic. Option B, Developer. Option C, Standard. Option D, Professional Direct. The correct answer is, Option D, Professional Direct. This is the only support option where Microsoft will offer a company architectural support and 24-7 Severity ABC support. The next question is, you recently received an invoice from Microsoft indicating 720 hours of virtual machine usage. You were surprised, considering you only access the virtual machine twice the entire month. To avoid being charged for unnecessary usage, what must you do? Option A, delete the VM each time you no longer need to use it. Option B, this must be an error. Request a refund. Option C, stop the virtual machine instance. Option D, Select a different image from the Azure Marketplace. The correct answer is, option C, stop the virtual machine instance. You will always pay for storage, as it is an underlying condition for managing a virtual infrastructure. That said, you kept the virtual infrastructure running, hence the excess operational costs. The next question is, if a user cannot run PowerShell as an admin or super user, which command line should they execute? Option A, install module name Ozalow Clobber Scope Current User. Option B, install module name Ozalow Clobber Scope Super User. Option C, install module name Ozalow Clobber Scope Administrator. Option D, install module name Ozalow Clobber Scope None. The correct answer is, option A, install module name Ozalow Clobber Scope Current User. Setting the scope for the current user as administrator or super user is not supported. In this case, you still need to set the scope. The next question is, resource hygiene quality is determined by two factors. What are they? Option A, the severity of issues and recency of the issue. Option B, the severity of issues and number of resources in a subscription. Option C, the severity of issues and the number of issues. Option D, the severity of issues only. The correct answer is, option C, the severity of issues and the number of issues. Both the number of resources and recency contribute to the number of issues. The next question is, which of the following are not best practices as part of Azure policy processes? Option A, a policy is often initiated against an assigned scope. Option B, a policy may delete unnecessary resources every 24 hours. Option C, a policy that is already assigned may be updated. Option D, during a compliance evaluation cycle, activity may occur over 24 hours. The correct answer is, option B, a policy may delete unnecessary resources every 24 hours. Deleting unnecessary resources every 24 hours is the only process that is not the best fit, although it could happen. The next question is, this question requires you to evaluate the use case. Select the condition that makes the following statements correct. 
you have an application made up of an Azure Web App with a Service Level Agreement, SLA, of 99.95% and an Azure Cosmos DB with an SLA of 99.99%. The composite SLA for the application is the product of both SLAs, which equals 99.94%. Option A, no change is necessary. Option B, 99.95%. Option C, 99.99%. Option D, 0.04%. The correct answer is, option A, no change is necessary. The formula 0.9999 times 0.9995 equals 0.99905. That translates to 99.94%. A composite SLA does not take the lowest or highest SLA value and accept those terms. The next question is, indicate if the following statements are true, yes, or false, no. Based on the questions regarding capital expenditure, CAPEX, and operational expenditure, OPEX. Option A, yes, no, no. Option B, no, yes, no. Option C, no, yes, yes. Option D, no, no, yes. The correct answer is, option D, no, no, yes. No. The first condition describes procuring more cloud storage. Since cloud services are considered operational expenses, not capital expenses. No. The second condition describes a subscription service. While the organization is procuring 20 devices, they will not own the devices outright, they are only leasing them for a monthly fee. At the end of the 36-month period, the devices must be returned. This too describes an operational expense. Yes. The final condition describes expenses associated with maintaining data center operations. By default, any expense to maintain on-premises operations is tied to capital expenses. The next question is, a customer with a basic account can still submit a support ticket for an Azure cloud issue? Option A, true. Option B, false. Option C, it depends on the type of Microsoft license you subscribe to. Option D, there is no such thing as a basic account. The correct answer is, option A, true. Users can still submit a support ticket, even with a basic account. There may be a requirement to increase account limits or inform Microsoft of performance issues for a service. Therefore, submitting a ticket is still a feature enabled for all users. It does not matter what type of account you have, the support type listed is offered to all customers. A basic account is the most fundamental account offered by Microsoft. The next question is, which of the following describes a virtual machine that can be deployed across multiple update and fault domains to maximize availability, which also ensures resiliency due to data center outages and unplanned maintenance events? Option A, availability zone. Option B, scale sets. Option C, virtual networks. Option D, virtual network gateways. The correct answer is, option B, scale sets. A scale set is a virtual machine that can be deployed across multiple update and fault domains to maximize availability, which also ensures resiliency due to data center outages and unplanned maintenance events. The next question is, which of the following is not a capability that one can complete with the Azure mobile app? Option A, monitor the health and status of Azure resources. Option B, diagnose and fix issues using the Azure portal or one of the command line interfaces. Option C, Run command line operations to manage Azure specific resources. Option D, create machine learning models. The correct answer is, option D, create machine learning models. You can only review the state of machine learning services, you cannot create any using the Azure mobile app at this time. The next question is, determine if the answer is true or false in the following three statements. Option A, true, false, false. Option B, true, false, true. Option C, false, false, true. Option D, false, true, false. The correct answer is, option A, true, false, false. True. Only those who pay for premium services receive alerts, notifications, and incident data proactively. False. The price per VM resource might be $15 per month. Other resources, though very greatly. False. Inventory can be reviewed for an entire subscription, but active maintenance in a single location is impossible. 
The next question is, the Microsoft Privacy Statement incorporates all of the business terms except Option A, Services Option B, Websites Option C, Apps Option D, Consulting Agreement Terms The correct answer is, Option D, Consulting Agreement Terms Microsoft Professional Services are not covered under any Privacy Statement. All other selections are amply covered under the Privacy Statement. The next question is, select true or false for each of the following statements. Option A, false, true, true. Option B, false, false, false. Option C, true, true, true. Option D, true, false, true. The correct answer is, option A, false, true, true. True. A pay-as-you-go plan charges a customer every month for services utilized, hence op x. True, true. Both Azure Reserved Instances and Azure Reserved Capacity allow you to buy capacity in advance. The next question is, what is the difference between fault tolerance and disaster recovery? Option A, a cloud service that scales horizontally is defined as fault tolerance, whereas disaster recovery is when a cloud service supports recovery after an outage or catastrophic event occurs. Option B, a cloud service that is available after an event occurs is defined as fault tolerance, whereas disaster recovery is when a cloud service supports recovery after an outage or catastrophic event occurs. Option C, a cloud service that offers rapid development, testing, and launching of a technical capability is referred to as fault tolerance, whereas disaster recovery is when a cloud service becomes available after an event occurs. Option D, a cloud service that is available after an event occurs is defined as disaster recovery whereas fault tolerance is when a cloud service supports recovery after an outage or catastrophic event occurs. The correct answer is, option B, a cloud service that is available after an event occurs is defined as fault tolerance, whereas disaster recovery is when a cloud service supports recovery after an outage or catastrophic event occurs. Fault tolerance is defined as a cloud service that is available after a disrupting event occurs. Disaster recovery describes a cloud service that supports recovery after an outage or catastrophic event occurs. The next question is, answer the following question by selecting yes or no to these three questions. Option A, no, yes, no. Option B, no, no, no. Option C, yes, no, yes. Option D, no, no, yes. The correct answer is, option D, no, no, yes. No. A user cannot sign up for a student subscription plan with a .com email address. The only way student plans are made available is with a verifiable .edu account. No. A user cannot sign up for a new Azure free account without a credit card. Signing up for an account requires a payment method and email address. Yes. The only way a user can utilize Azure services is by establishing a subscription associated with a billing account. The next question is, the most efficient way to distribute Azure Resource Management, ARM, templates is using which tool? Option A, Azure Cloud Shell. Option B, Azure Resource Groups. Option C, Azure Resource Manager. Option D, Azure PowerShell. The correct answer is, Option C, Azure Resource Manager. Azure Resource Manager is a container to hold templates. The next question is, select the regulatory and compliance measure that does not appear as part of the Secure Center dashboard. Option A, ISO 27001. Option B, ISO 9001. Option C, PCI DSS 3.2.1. Option D, SOAP TSP. The correct answer is, option B, ISO 9001. While ISO 9001 may somehow be evaluated by an organization as part of their quality management systems process, which is what ISO 9001-2015 measures, this is not one of the regulatory and compliance measures within the scope of Azure's evaluation. The next question is, which of the following supplies information or metadata about a resource when trying to classify and codify resource management, cost management, optimization, operations management, security, governance and regulatory compliance, workloads such as virtual machines, and automated solutions. Option A, resource lock. Option B, resource tag. Option C, Azure policy. Option D, Azure blueprints. The correct answer is, option B, resource tag. Resource tags are organization mechanisms.